Today we'll be looking at the temperature limits of a gaming computer. I'll also be explaining what will happen to a computer if it reaches those temperature limits and how you can see your own computer's temperatures. So every computer has several components inside them and each one of those components will have their own temperature limit. So let's start with the processor. Here are some of Intel's processors released in 2019 or earlier. Note that all of them shown here have a temperature limit of 100 degrees Celsius. It doesn't matter how many cores or threads they have, or what speed they run at, they all have the same temperature limit. But not all of their CPUs have the same limit, as you can see with these ones here. And here's some of AMD's processors released in 2019 or earlier. All of them shown here have a temperature limit of 95 degrees Celsius. These AMD Threadripper CPUs all have a limit of 68 Celsius. And as you can see here, some of their other ones vary. So what happens if an Intel or AMD processor reaches over their maximum temperature? Well, the CPU's performance will be throttled in order to cool down the CPU a little. If the temperature still continues to rise even with throttling, the CPU will shut down to prevent any damage. This kind of protection feature has been in place for AMD and Intel processors for many years now. So let's have a look at this computer's CPU temperature. For this I'm going to use Hardware Info, which can be downloaded for free at hwinfo.com. This software will show you the temperature of your processor, motherboard, hard drives, graphics card and certain power supplies as well. Whilst this computer is under load, the CPU is hitting a maximum of 66 degrees Celsius on any of its cores. This is well within spec for this particular CPU as it can still operate at 100 degrees Celsius. And as shown here, none of the CPU cores were thermal throttling at any point. By the way, the room temperature for any of these tests in this video is about 19 degrees Celsius. As for the motherboard, they can have several temperature sensors such as one at the CPU, one at the VRMs, the chipset, graphics card, and perhaps a few others as well. The VRMs may reach up to 110 to 125 degrees C before the motherboard shuts down to protect itself. If the VRMs reach over 100 C, there could be some thermal throttling, meaning that the CPU will run slower as a result until the VRMs cool down a little. The maximum operating temperature for the chipset can vary, but just to give an example, the Intel 300 series chipsets released in late 2018 have a maximum operating temperature of 110 C and will shut down before they reach 128. But some motherboards, AMD or Intel, will shut down before their chipset reaches those kind of temperatures. Most will also have a sensor that will show the motherboard's temperature and may give a warning if it gets too hot. As an example, if it reaches over 60 degrees C, an alert might be triggered. If the motherboard gets too hot, it might shut down the computer to protect itself. Just take all these temperatures shown here as a rough guide, because each motherboard will be a little bit different. So let's have a look at the motherboard temperatures for this computer. Well, there's nothing to be concerned about here. All the temperatures look fine, even whilst this computer is under load. Now let's look at hard drives, as they can potentially overheat too. Most 3.5 inch hard disk drives have a temperature limit of 60 degrees Celsius. Most 2.5 inch solid state drives have a temperature limit of 70, and most M.2 drives do as well. There are some exceptions to this. For example, some of the Western Digital Red hard disk drives can operate at up to 65 degrees C. And some of the older Seagate hard disk drives had a limit of 50, though their newer drives also run at up to 60 degrees Celsius. If any type of hard drive overheats, this can lead to data loss, file corruptions, a blue screen of death, system crashes, or damage to the hard drive but there are some hard drives these days that have safeguards in place so that when they reach a critical temperature, their performance is throttled before there's any problems. If temperatures continue to rise, 
even with throttling, the computer may shut down to protect the drive from damage. So let's see the hard drive temperatures for this computer. This computer has two hard drives and both of their maximum temperatures shown here are easily within spec as they are both well below the usual 60 or 70 degrees Celsius limit. Now for the system memory, the temperature limit for DDR4 is often between 85 and 105 degrees Celsius, though there are some that can handle higher temperatures than this. For DDR3, it's normally 85 to 95, though again some can go higher. And for DDR2, the maximum temperatures are usually between 85 and 105 Celsius. It's not so easy to see your memory's temperature using software, so if you want to know how hot your memory is, you could use an infrared thermometer like this one. Links in the description if you want to check it out. So let's take a look at graphics card temperature limits. As you can see, these 20 series cards from NVIDIA all have a limit of 88 or 89 degrees Celsius. These 16 series cards have a slightly higher limit. Then there's a 10 series ranging from 91 to 97 C. Going back further in time, the 900 series, which range from 91 to 98 Celsius. And back further still, the 700 series, with limits ranging from 95 to 98 C. As for AMD graphics cards, information on their temperature limits isn't so widely available. But for most graphics cards, AMD or NVIDIA, if they're running at 80 to 85 degrees Celsius or below, the card will work perfectly fine. Some will be okay running at temperatures in the 90s, such as the GTX 1080 from NVIDIA, and some will be okay above that, like the RX 5700 XT from AMD. If any graphics card reaches over its temperature limit, its performance will be throttled so that the card can cool down a little. If the temperature continues to rise despite throttling taking place, the computer will shut down to prevent any damage. For this computer, the graphics card temperature whilst under load reached 61 degrees Celsius, so that's pretty good. And if I scroll down, we can see there has been no thermal throttling either. For the computer's power supply, some of the cheaper ones have a maximum operating temperature of 25 degrees Celsius, and some of the high-end ones will be more like 50 Celsius. If the power supply has over temperature protection, it should switch off before it overheats and causes serious damage to itself. Some power supplies make it easy to see their temperatures and others not so much. For example, let's say you have a Corsair RM750i power supply. The I in its title indicates that a cable can be connected from the power supply to an internal USB port on the motherboard. Then using Corsair software or hardware info, you can see the power supply's temperature. It's reaching well below its temperature limit of 50 degrees Celsius, even when under load, so there's no problems here. If you do find that one of your computer components are running too hot, it could be that your computer needs a clean, as dust buildup can cause overheating. Or maybe the computer case has an airflow problem, perhaps the room temperature is too high, or one of the computer fans are faulty. Those are some of the things that could be checked if a component is running too hot, but hopefully your computer is running below its maximum temperatures even during gaming or some other heavy task load. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.